Hey everyone, it's Nicole here today with a couple of cards featuring hand-drawn backgrounds colored with Copic markers for the two new Leading Ladies part of the August 2018 release from Ellen Hudson. I've created a hospital type background and then a teaching chalkboard type of background for my cards. We're gonna start with the teacher lady card today and we're gonna build a background. And it really is quite easy to do. Um, all I am doing is creating some straight lines. I've got a ruler, I've got a pencil here that I'm drawing really light lines. And I'm gonna start with my chalkboard. I'm gonna kind of plan out where I want it to go. I used my stamp as a guide. I definitely wanted my chalkboard high enough in the card so that it wouldn't look kind of funny. I've drawn in my rectangle and I want it kind of coming in off the side of the card to give the illusion that this is just a snapshot of the overall picture, that the chalkboard's actually longer, that the wall is longer. This is just the small portion of the overall scene. Now I did draw in this other little line here because originally I thought I might do like a little counter and I got to thinking, wow, I have got way too much going on. So kind of ignore that last line at the bottom. I'm actually gonna sit everything along the floorboard, um, any of my additional supplies, especially because I want the little piece of chalk to be sitting along the bottom edge of this chalkboard. So basically right now we've got the chalkboard, we've got it framed in, because I just did a little thin line all the way around. And then I need to figure out where I want to put my line for the floorboard. So I really need to use my leading lady stamp to gauge and guide me for where I want that to go. So probably about, I would say, a half inch up from the bottom of the card maybe. Um, maybe a little bit more. I don't think I really measured it all that much but we're gonna draw that in as well. And I'm also playing with some greetings. Part of the great thing about both cards is I wanted the elements in the background to serve as a space for my sentiment. So we've got the greeting we're gonna use for the teacher card is the reports are all in, you're amazing. And then I'm gonna add something a little extra that we'll talk about when we get to that point in the card. But I have drawn in that little line at the bottom and I would say it's maybe a little less than a half inch actually. Um, and then I'm gonna use post-it tape to mask off a few areas. I decided I wanted to do a brick wall and I didn't wanna color it in myself. You totally could. Um, you could make it a solid wall if you wanted to. I just wanted a little additional texture, but I've got to mask off where my chalkboard is. I've got to mask off where the floor is. And then we're going to kind of just stencil around that chalkboard with the Tim Holtz brick to stencil. I have used this before with Leading Lady Dyes. It is probably one of my most used stencils ever. Um, fantastic stencil. My only thing I wish is it was a little bit wider so I didn't have to piece it together, but it's relatively easy to do even at that. I'm also not doing a perfect stenciling job, kind of a messy stenciling job with pumice stone distress ink, going in pretty lightly, pouncing it first and then just kind of blending it out. And that looks good. The only thing I forgot was to erase my little pencil line, so I'm gonna have to do that later. I'm gonna go ahead and ink the bottom of the card for the carpet on the floor. If you wanted to, you could definitely, instead of um, inking it, color it in with Copic markers, I'm gonna show you that option for the Medical Lady card. I'm also taking a Copic fine liner pen and I am going to trace my lines. I think that's going to make the card look, a, or the other elements in the card, the background elements of the card, look a little bit more like our stamped elements by having this little black line. So again, just using my ruler and just tracing over those lines, I can go back in with my eraser then after I've done this and erase any pencil lines that still might show. I know it doesn't look like much at this point, but you start adding a little bit of coloring, a little bit of inking, some other things, and it really comes to life. One of my favorite, favorite techniques is creating the chalkboard. And I've done this with other chalkboard elements before, but it's my favorite. I like to use the chisel tip 
of my Copic marker to color it in. It looks awful when you start, but it really creates some fantastic results. So I colored the whole thing in with the chisel tip first of my C6 Cool Gray 6 marker. I'm gonna come in from the other side with um, that C6 maybe a little bit too, and then I'm gonna go over the whole thing a lot again with that chisel tip with C6 to blend out those harsh lines. It takes a little bit of work. You kind of have to go over it a few times. I'm gonna go ahead and use my bullet tip, or not bullet tip, the brush tip, and go over that. Um, because the paper's pretty saturated, I'm gonna go ahead and color in the frame with E57 and E59. This is just the frame on the chalkboard, kind of helps frame it up, give it a nice, clean, finished look. I did, I know I've sped this up quite a bit, but I did quick coloring here. There's no need to go in crazy. Now this is where the magic happens with the chalkboard. This is the colorless blender. It is not a blender. Um, it actually removes the ink. And where I place this, it starts lightening because it's moving and pushing that ink out and away. That's the look we want because we want this to look like a chalkboard that has been erased multiple times. And it ends up creating this really fantastic, um, realistic effect that I absolutely love. And it looks like I missed a few pencil lines. I wanna get rid of those because those are gonna kinda of take away from our overall look and feel of our card. So this is looking good. I'm really excited about our background now. This is the perfect setting and backdrop for our teacher lady. I'm gonna combine my sentiment from teacher lady with some totally random sayings. These are from one of the other Essentials by Ellen stamp sets and I really felt like I needed to fill in more on the chalkboard and I wanted something kind of bigger and I thought this would work fantastic. So we're just gonna start with our first two greetings and then I will remove those and go back in with the scripty one. We're gonna ink these up with Versamark ink stamp those right on our chalkboard, and then we want to heat emboss with white embossing powder so it looks like this has all been written on the chalkboard. That is definitely the look that I'm going for with this design. I love the white embossing anyway, but on a chalkboard we definitely need the white embossing. So I've sprinkled on my embossing powder here, and I'm going to go ahead and heat set this. I found this really worked best. That way I could totally see where I'd already stamped. I was a little bit afraid I might overlap with my um, cursive sentiment if I didn't do this. I'm gonna hit the back of my paper, the front of my paper, go ahead and pop this back in my mini Misty, clean off these other stamps, put those away, grab my You Really Are greeting, and we'll stamp that right above here, just like we did with the other two. And you can totally see that chalkboard coming to life. This little background scene just really makes the whole leading lady take center stage. And that's the look I'm going for here. I love to create scene cards, but these, are, these leading ladies are oftentimes a size and a scale that don't work with a lot of other... Um, elements we might have from other stamp sets. So I love to create my own. Now I even like to go in with my colorless blender and create some little dots here and there. It really just kind of helps create that imperfection in the chalk chalkboard that I really love. I went ahead and stamped my elements from the Teacher Lady stamp set on some smooth white cardstock and we're gonna color everything in with Copic markers. I have left the coloring in today and I have listed and linked the colors I'm using across the top of the screen for easy reference. Starting with skin and hair and to keep it easy and consistent, I kept I did the skin and hair exactly the same for both the teacher lady and medical lady. But you could definitely use whatever colors you want to here. I tend to start with skin and hair and then go out, build out from there with coloring in her outfit. So let's grab, her, do her hair real quick, E53, 55, and 57, and then move on to her little jean capris or jeans. 
with B 91, 95, and 97. I felt like the jeans would coordinate well with everything else going on in the card, that blue carpet and things, and then we need a pop of color, definitely, so not everything is too neutral. We're gonna do a nice red little sweater here and add some texture with a pin once we get this all blended out. So our 27, 46, and 39 are the colors I used for her little sweater. Adding in my darker colors where it naturally will be darker. And then we'll go in with the mid-tone, blend out that dark a little bit, and go back with our lightest R27 and blend it out even more. Give some nice texture. Little cool gray for the white shirt she has popped underneath her little short sleeve sweater. So it still gives the illusion of white but adds some nice texture and depth and dimension. And then adding some white stripes to her sweater with a white opaque pin. First I'm going diagonal, then I'm gonna go diagonal the other way to give it kind of that plaid look. And I love the texture this adds to the design. Even some little detail around the collar and hem of her sweater as well. I'm gonna grab my cool grays, color in the telescope, We'll use cool grays, also lighter cool grays for the chalk to give it a tiny touch of color. Again, we don't want to make it gray, we just want it to have depth and dimension like the rest of the colored images. Um, some cool grays for the coffee mug will be used, the glue bottle. The ruler's got some great yellows. The apple is the same colors of red that we used on the sweater. A little green for the stem. The tip of the glue bottle will be some orange. And then her notebook I felt like needed a little bit more color as well instead of um, maybe some more of the neutrals that we've used for a lot of the other elements. And we're going to be having her hold on to a notebook, a ruler, and a pencil in her arm carrying all kinds of things. And I decided to go with some oranges here, something to break up um, the rest of the colors that we're using. So Y are zero, zero, four, and nine. And that'll add a nice little pop of color. Kind of keeps with the primary color scheme we've got with red and blue and yellow. And once everything's colored in, let's go ahead and die cut these with the coordinating teacher lady dies. And we can start popping everything in place on the card. We're gonna tuck that notebook under her arm. She's standing there next to the chalkboard at the front of the classroom is kind of how I'm imagining it. And then, like I mentioned, I did kind of nix the idea of doing a counter. We're just gonna have the wall and the chalkboard. I felt like that was too much trying to add going on. And we're just gonna set the rest of these accessories down here along the floorboard. I know that's probably not where they'd actually go, but it just kind of lends to the overall feel of a teacher type of card. It doesn't actually have to be totally realistic. I tried to keep it as much as possible, but I think these tie in nicely. They fill in some great white space. They add interest to the design. And now the only thing I had a little trouble is I wanted to put the pencil somewhere and I kept trying to stick it under her other hand and it just did not work. It did not look good. Uh, maybe if I had done masking instead, that would have been okay, but I didn't like it here. So I tucked it under her hand, added some black glaze pin to her eyes, added some eyelashes with a fine tip pin. I like that look on the face added the thank you from the teacher lady stamp set stamped inside. I'll pop this panel on a top fold card base and our teacher lady card is all finished. Let's move on to the medical lady card. For this one, definitely wanted some hospital doors. It's gonna be super easy, All again, all straight lines. We're gonna start with the bottom of the card, or rather I think at the top of the card is what I actually started with. Leaving a little bit of room up there, but we need to grab our stamp. I guess I did start at the bottom, pardon me. Um, but grab our stamp so we know how tall we need to make those doors. So there's just a tiny little strip up at the top of the card, 
And then I want to center the doors in the center of this card. So we're just gonna kind of work with building this. I always like to start with pencil. So if I have to erase anything, I can do that easily. We're gonna frame up the doors. I want the doors to appear to be glass doors framed with silver. And then I'm just gonna pencil in some little handles. I did not use a ruler for this. You definitely could if you wanted to. I thought I might frame in the door here and I decided I really didn't like that look at all. I thought it was gonna take away from the detail and design. So we'll erase that. But I wanted to leave this in so you could see exactly how I built the background and how easy it is to do just with straight lines. I am definitely um, not artistic in the sense that it's easy to draw or come up with backgrounds. So if I can create a straight line background, that's what I'm gonna do. Now I'm taking my black Copic fine liner and tracing those lines that I've committed to. It's gonna help with coloring. I just drew in my handles. I'm gonna draw over those again. I did not use a ruler. You can if you want to. For this card, as I mentioned with the first one, a lot of my background was created and thought out beforehand as far as I want to leave a space for the sentiment. In this case, I want it to work with the background of the card. Um, for the teacher card, writing on a blackboard, but it also is the greeting for the card. On this one, the sentiments are going to be stamped onto one of the doors of this hospital or clinic, whatever you wanna call it, so that it looks like the writing for the facility, but again, it serves as a great place for our greeting, which I think is super duper fun. Now I colored in the ground on this card with my gray markers and I kind of did that same technique that I did for the chalkboard. I went over it with the colorless blender to lighten it up in some areas. And now we're coloring in the doors with some light blue green colors, very, very light. I want them to look like glass doors. And I had to work with this a little bit more just because of the drastic color difference between BG01 and BG0000. BG000 um, ends up being probably the primary color throughout just in order to get this a nice blend. And I'm using my chisel tip again. It definitely lays down more color um, than the brush tip does. And I wanna get that color laid down quickly. I'm definitely saturating the paper quite a lot and the more saturated it gets, the more this blends out. I don't mind the lighter area in the center. It's a great little highlight area, almost like maybe if it's where the sun is hitting it or whatever and reflecting off. But wanna have a nice blend and I don't wanna see any of those chisel tip lines in my doors. Once we get this all blended out, we can color in the frame of the door with some lighter cool grays. So I used darker cool grays down near the bottom with C6 and C8. We're gonna frame it up with C3 and C6. And even at the top of the card where it's gonna be like the building or whatever, I went in with C00 and a little C3 to give that a little bit more um, interest than just plain white. I am using the brush tip to color this in, really fast coloring, just kind of going around quickly with C6, and then we're just gonna blend that back all out with C3. I did not take a ton of time to color this and blend it a ton. I just wanted to get the colors laid down, get that all ready to go. It provides the perfect backdrop for this little medical lady. Now, once I have all of my coloring done, and it looks like I forgot to blend out the handles. I will do that real quick. I am ready to figure out where I wanna put my sentiment. And I decided to use Sorry I Was Such a Pill. And I tried to use the little heartbeat stamp and it wasn't working. So let's stamp the sentiment first with some black ink. And I decided to use the little cross from the Medical Lady stamp set instead. And I like how prominent it is and how much it stands out on those medical facility doors. 
This is gonna look much, much better. I decided instead of using a red ink, I stamped this with Versamark and embossed with red embossing powder so that it would be really red and really stand out on my little medical clear glass door here. Now, just like the other card, I stamped my medical lady and accessories off camera, and then we're gonna color everything in. I mentioned on the teacher lady card, we colored the hair and face the same for both. Um, I was just trying to keep it easy and consistent. Mostly I wanted to show how to create some really fun scenic backgrounds to showcase these leading ladies well but you can use whatever color you want. For her scrubs, I kind of went with the traditional kind of greenish color, um, but again, those could be any color you wanted to. I just grabbed one of my favorite color combinations, G00, 02, and 09, and I'm gonna work really hard to get that nice blend for these. Not near as much coloring. I didn't use quite as many accessories. I did end up adding the shot because I felt like I just needed something else after I had already um, stamped and colored and die cut everything here that you see here. And sometimes that happens and you can always go and add some additional images as needed. We'll blend out with our lightest color. For her shoes, I did cool grays again Another example of kind of keeping with the markers that I already had out. You could color those anything you want to color. These are C6 and C8 with colorless blender at the toes to just lighten the area where the toes naturally will um, be in the shoes. The pill bottle, I just went with, I think, Y11, 8, and 08. Really fast coloring. It's a small little image. I've die cut everything. I've put the stethoscope around her neck, which I think is super fun. I love that. And we're gonna pop her in place on the card. Such a fun little easy backdrop for her. I love that. And then we're gonna take a pill bottle and the shot and tuck them kind of around her hands just so that it looks like she's holding them. If you really wanted to get technical about it, you could definitely, instead of stamping and die cutting them, you could always stamp, mask all of your images first and then draw in your background around them for a truly one layer card. So here's kind of where I decided she needed something else. So I just grabbed my piece of paper that I just used, stamped my little shot, and then we'll die cut this and color it in. I think I just used some cool gray markers again for this. Pop it into her hand. And just like the last card, we're going to glue this panel on the front of a top fold card base to finish it all off. We will draw in eyelashes on her eyes, use a black glaze pen on her eyes to really make them pop. I recommend not adding the black glaze pin until you have die cut the leading ladies or whatever image you might be using and, and wanting to add definition to the eyes because sometimes running them through the die cutting machine will make that glaze flatten. So I always add that last. The only difference I did on this card that I did not do for the other card is I opted to finish the shot and the pill bottle with glossy accents to make them nice and shiny when that glossy accents dries. So here's that black clay glaze pen I was talking about and you can immediately see that it makes those eyes pop. Once that's dry, I did go in and add highlights to the eyes on both leading ladies with a white opaque pen just so that they weren't stark black eyes. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these custom backgrounds for the new August 2018 Essentials by Ellen Leading Ladies. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.